everybody and welcome to a new After Effects tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create this bouncing ball with the squash and stretch effect. This is pretty easy to animate and it's also really fast as well and you will get a really cool and fun result. So let's get right into it. So as you can see here I have my reference composition with the ball animation. You will see that when the ball is falling faster it will stretch and when it is on the floor it will squash the same when it is going up and the same with the remaining bounces all right so the stretch uh, it's automatic and the squash will will have to do it manually but it's pretty easy so let's get right into it all right so let's create a new composition I'm going to set the width to 1500 and the height also to 1500 and I'm, in I'm going to call this composition main. Alright, I'm going to bring here my floor and my background layers just to have as a reference. Let me crop the length over here to 5 seconds, that's it. So I'm going to create a new ellipse that is going to be the ball and I'm going to call this layer ball of course i'm going to uh, we have to make sure to have the anchor point set on the middle of the ball just like that and now we can begin animating the ball so let me just align the ball to the middle and before we start animating the position i'm going to press p on my keyboard to bring the position value we need to make sure that uh, we have the two axes separated because let me just show you if we animate the position having the the same the axis united you will see what is going to happen so i'm going to animate just really quickly and i'm going to carve the path and what we have to do is to set the the keyframes when the ball is on floating on the on the air we have to set them with a little we have to we have to ease them okay so i'm going to press f i'm going to select both keyframes when the ball is on top and i'm going to press f9 on my keyboard so you will see that the effect that we have is not the correct one because the ball is also stopping there on the x axis and the movement on the x axis is constant so it doesn't have to stop you will see that this is not a very realistic result so we're going to split the dimensions like that again i'm going to align the ball on the middle and we're going to set the first keyframe on the y position when the ball is on the top and we I, i'm going to move 10 frames and set the ball on the floor and then i'm going to move eight frames instead of 10 because the ball will be bouncing the ball will be will be bouncing lower and and therefore faster so i'm going to advance 10 frames and then move back two, move the ball up again, then move eight frames. So it will be um, 26 and just going to paste the keyframe when the ball is on the floor again. And I'm going to repeat the same process for two or three more bounces. So now instead of moving eight places, eight frames, sorry, we are going to move six, one, two, three, four, five, six and again I'm, I'm going to move the ball six frames again one two three four five six and copy and paste the keyframe when the ball is on the floor and now i'm going to move four frames one two three four move the ball up a little bit again one two three four and again on the floor and now we can maybe move two frames but that that will be a little weird because it, it will be pretty fast so we are going to move four frames again uh, to make the last bounce one two three four then ball up a little bit one two three four and the ball down again so you'll see that we have this bounce it's not very realistic but we are going to ease the keyframes when the ball is on top again so i'm going to select these keyframes that are the ones when the ball is on top on floating in the air sorry and this is the last one and i'm going to press f9 on my keyboard to ease them and you will see that we will have a, a mostly realistic animation but we have to adjust the curves a little bit 
So with these keyframes selected, I'm going to the graph editor and I'm going to pull and I'm going to adjust the curves. So I have a little bit more of the, so I, so the ball will stop a little bit more where, where it is floating on the air. So you will see that we have, maybe that's too much. I'm going to go back and adjust it a little bit less. There we go. So that's that's something I like. So now we have to animate the X axis because the ball is going to come from the left to the right. So I'm going to set a keyframe on the X position and move. All. You'll see that the Y position is moving along along with the X position. So we'll move it right there. And then I'm going to step on the last keyframe on the Y position and move the X axis to the right. And you will see that we have here a, a pretty pretty curve where that indicates how the ball is going to bounce. So you will see that we have a pretty realistic animation. Uh, something that I don't quite like is that the ball is stopping quite suddenly on the X axis, as you can see there. So I'm going to ease them, is this keyframe, sorry, with F9. And maybe I'm going to adjust the curve a little bit and move it a little bit to the right, like that. So the ball will stop right on the right. So now we have the position animation. Uh, now we have to animate the squash effect and we are going to make this animating the scale. So what we want to do is when the ball is touching the floor, we want to make it smaller on the y axis and a little bit bigger on the x axis so it will man it will keep its volume so i'm going to create a keyframe on the scale one frame before the y position touches the floor and when it touches the floor i'm going to set the y scale to 65 and the x scale to 125 and we have to adjust a little bit the position because as you can see here the ball is no longer touching the floor so i'm going to adjust it and for the next frame i'm going to move another frame i'm just going to copy and paste the scale value when it was just normal and we're going to copy these frames select them and ctrl c and just paste them for the next uh, keyframe when the ball is touching the floor so you have to make sure that the middle frame on the scale is matching the the frame on the Y position when it's on the floor. And, and then again, moving the ball a little bit closer to the floor and repeat the same process. All right, so we have now uh, the squash animation. So you'll see that when the ball is on the floor, it will deform. So maybe on the next, on the last frame, you don't have, you don't want to squash the ball. So maybe just leave it like that because if you squash it and the position stays the same, you will get this, uh, like the ball is going through the floor and we don't want that. So just delete it. Perfect. And now we have our animation. All right. So now we are going to add the the stretch effect. For that, we are going to use the echo effect. Just apply it, and you will see that we have like a sort of stretch, but not quite. So we are going to make some adjustments. All right. So we are going to change the echo operator to maximum, and then we want to set the echo time to minus. 0.004 this is going to be the time delay between each echo you'll see that it's pretty together with the original ball but we're going to apply an expression now that what it's going to do is going to increase the number of echoes along with the speed on which the ball is moving so when the ball is moving faster the number of echoes will increase so it will be it will give the sensation that it's stretching and moving fast and when the ball is on the floor we we won't have the echoes because we the ball is not moving at any velocity at any velocity so i'm going to 
alt click on a number of echoes and then paste this expression that you will find on the description of this video uh, and this expression what it does is ex exactly what I just explained it just takes the speed of the Y position and generates a number of echoes based on that speed so as you will see here when the ball is moving fast you, you see here it's moving pretty slow so we don't have a lot of echoes but when it's moving faster we can the ball will start to stretch even more so when it's on the floor it's almost like we have no echo at all and then the same again so maybe if you want to have a little bit more of a stretch you can modify this 350 you can set it to a lower number like i don't know uh, 280 to 20 and you will have a longer stretch there you go so you can see that's a pretty fun animation all right so that's all for this tutorial remember that if you want the project it is available on the description you can purchase it through my gumroad page and you will also help me to support my channel so i would really appreciate that if you have any doubts or, or comments don't hesitate to put it below and i will get back to you as soon as i can so i hope you like this tutorial and see you on the next one